There's been mixed reactions towards uh, the 2023 budget statement presented by Finance Minister Ken Ofori Atta. In Kumasi, for instance, while some people are confident of a positive overturn of the country's economic fortunes, others are dissatisfied with the valued added tax going up by 2.5%. Love FM's Emmanuel Bright Kweku has been interacting with some residents. Let's take things gradually. It started with 1.5% and now it's been decreased. Then it's good. Feel is an essential commodity running the economy. So if it's high, prices of goods will go up. The statement won't help. We are hoping things will be subsidized. Every item on the market now is expensive. If the VAT is introduced, it won't help. Now, President, baby, cry the G20, baby, the G18. We have some normal way, pa, yeah, for ma. Now, say stay, say better to normal ma can one. Yes, it dollars in baby, I could see you move away. Then come from here, we soon toy. This idea, baby, I can't go near. We cry, come for she, baby, move. Thank you for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Now, this we are doing no case, pa, or buy, or end. Region beyond, we see shelves are yes, store in Miami. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah established a lot of preservation factories for the country. So if the government wants to build more factories to produce locally, then we will be able to harvest more and feed ourselves. If the government would only institute these measures, then we would agree to the budget statement. We hope everything gets back to normal. Sapa pawe ane kasa vati kumi preko. Divata sam kwa nza swoka, nza swa de bakura, swa chum. As a president, not the same person who said VAT kills, he has to cancel it. If they introduce the VAT, there will be a lot of suffering. He placed income tax on fuel. How has that helped? Who rules the nation without income tax? What the income tax has changed our for? The account to petrol so, and the entimento. Now by by na wache chiro mai, our the income tax, eche. Not just a crown of fit time of a swab or minor. You live in the beginning crown, we and a sa and can money pan be the Nantias here. So Uncle Oman Bafum, no one yet starts here, and I can now crown a costruca cra and can buy. If they had started the A levy on a lower rate, people wouldn't have agitated. But where they started was too hard. That's why people complained. They are the ones running the country's affairs. I'm not sure they will institute measures to hurt us. Uh, let's now show you the exact measures outlined to show up Ghana's struggling economy as put together by our research desk here at Joy News. Now, if you look at uh, the measures that uh, the, the minister announced, it, it, it brought some revenue measures. Now, one of them uh, is that value added tax, VAT, will be increased from 12.5% to 15.5% now because he added 2.5%. That's the addition that has been ad added to the already 12.5 there. E-levy rate will now be reduced to 1.5% while the daily threshold will be removed. So you will no longer pay 1.5% but you will be paying 1% now. Now the 1% concessional rate will be increased to 5%. That, th these are some of the uh, revenue measures. It's continued that taxes on cigarette and tobacco product will be revised. Excise rate for spirit will be revised above that of beers. Electronic smoking devices and liquids will be taxed. So that is, uh, those are some of the measures as well. Uh, it continues to say that the benchmark discount policy will be fully phased out in 2023. So that uh, for uh, uh, in, in importers. Now, now um, let, let, so, so 
E levy is now, as a, in, in the measures that uh, were contained there, it is 1%. So it, is, it, has, it has reduced from the 1.5 we used to know to 1% now. Now, Professor John Gachi is Dean of the School of Business, University of Cape Coast. He joins us on Zoom now for some interaction uh, on this budget. Prof, um, first of all, the government brought, brought up uh, some revenue measures. But, but let, let's look at what impact this will have on uh, the ordinary Ghanaian. Well, I think the impact is, is known. Um, it will increase prices across board uh, every commodity has VAT element in it fuel has VAT in it uh, hotel bills have VAT in it mm -hmm. uh, so almost everything is going to go up uh, now mm. uh, not even when they are reducing say for example the e-levy and all of that it won't affect anything right the e levy is not reduced. It's only recalibrated to ensure that much more people are cut, are, are caught up with the the task. Uh, so you reduce the uh, the e levy from 1.5 to 1 percent, but now there is no uh, uh, limit of the transaction. Mm -hmm. The base has been collapsed. Okay. So even if you, if you if you transact with uh, ten CDs, you are paying the e levy. So that is to say that there is it is the law of small numbers okay. and the law of large numbers. So uh, if large number of people are paying the tax cumulatively, uh, government is expected to rake uh, to rake in more revenue. Okay. Now uh, we know that every austerity measure has a timeline. That was missing from the addition of the 2.5% VAT. Uh, or this is, this is not the case. Is that, is that something that uh, we can't say is, is the same, so we should be given a timeline to this measure? Is it different? Well, normally, when um, uh, some taxes are in, uh, introduced, uh, there is an exit clause attached to it. Attached to it. Mm. Uh, but... Uh, the VAT that have been introduced, there's no exit clause attached to it. Uh, therefore, we assume that uh, uh, it's time to, to remain uh, as it is. But it's not something you bring in when you know you are going through a difficult time so that when you are out of it, you can take it off. Why aren't we seeing something like this with the addition of the 2.5%? I think normally that applies to uh, things that are not normally tasked. For example, uh, you recall the reconcil uh, reconstruction levy. Mm. Uh, I believe you recall that task. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that task is not as per se a task, but it's just a call on businesses to contribute additionally to what they are contributing to solve the problem. So after some time, that task will be called off uh, 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 from our books. So that is what we call the exit clause. Mm. But when a normal task uh, is just increased, uh, it doesn't normally follow with uh, a sunset clause. Oh, okay. All right then. Now, uh, 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 Prof, can you hold for us? Because uh, we, we understand that, uh, that there are, in this whole budget presentation, other people have uh, come up with other things and we, we need to uh, get you to help us understand this. Now, we can confirm that government is set to suspend interest payment for domestic bondholders and impose a 30% haircut on uh, foreign bonds. Speaking exclusively to join News after the presentation of the 2023 budget, Deputy Finance Minister John Kumar explained that under the debt restructuring arrangement, domestic bondholders will receive zero interest rate for 2023. We are calling it debt exchange program because as far as the domestic restructuring is concerned, we don't intend to make domestic investment investors lose on their principles. But at the moment, when you invest in Ghana markets, where the market stands today, investors are losing. If you go 
to your investor today, EDC or EcoBank or Data Bank or whatever, for your 1 million Ghana cities investment today, you may get maybe 40 or 50 percent of the value. So you're already losing. Now, government is coming in to say, let's exchange that debt and spread it for three years. But in the course of the program, your first year, you are not going to get, you are going to get zero interest. Your principal is secured. Because the market is weak, you're already losing about 50% of the value. So wait, and let's revamp the economy by standing still your interest for first year. Second year, maybe we we'll give you 5%. It's still not fully uh, completed. Then maybe the third year, you get 10% on your capital. So by the end of the third year, you would have gotten back your principal plus interest without collapsing the economy. That is why there was important need to call it a debt exchange program and not a debt restructuring with a haircut mentality that he's talking about. So clearly, this is a very well-structured program to one, protect investors and protect the domestic. And of course, of course, you know that currently where we stand, we don't have access to the international uh, uh, capital market. And so we also have to protect the domestic market. So everything we are doing, we have in mind to also protect domestic investment. And that is why we are not calling it haircut or domestic. Just, just for clarity, for those who are holding domestic uh, investors yes. who are holding government denominated bonds, treasury bill, does, yes. it, is that, does it include no, it? Bill not it's not, included. So only bonds, yes, government only bonds, bonds, government and others. And others. Yes. You're saying that the arrangement you've come, you will come Another to, debt exchange program, debt exchange which program, which will be announced fully very soon, is that if you, so what about those who have a five year program, a five year bond, all, and if, it, it's all be part of it. so it's are all you extending the maturity day? Obviously, to help the market revive and restored so that you get the value back to go today and anytime you invest it's two things you either gain on your investment or you lose well so that uh, the deputy finance minister but the ministry has released a statement to clarify their position on debt restructuring according to them the process is still underway it says that the ministry of finance provides the following update on the progress of technical work on on possible debt op uh, operations as part of ongoing negotiations with the International Monetary Fund, IMF, or the fund. This update follows a statement made on the site of the presentation of the 2023 budget in Parliament on Thursday, 24th November 2022. Now, as stated in the budget speech by the Honorable Minister for Finance, Ken Ophiata, the government of Ghana is contemplating a debt operation aimed at alleviating the pressures on the national budget and rest restoring debt sustainability. This would also uh, open up financing streams and provide needed balance of payment support from the fund. Details of the different, different layers of a uh, debt operation, including the terms of principal payment and interest on the public debt, are still being discussed, taking into account principles of debt sustainability and international best practices. Now, Prof, this is what the ministry is saying. After the deputy minister had given us indication that there, there won't be any uh, interest payment for 2023, what do you make of what's happening? So what is happening is, is clearly debt restructuring with all its forms. Uh, you are losing uh, on the maturity, so the maturity is extended, uh, interest is lost, so the two elements of debt restructuring are all in place. Uh, but look at who is talking. The one who has, uh, in, who is indebted to uh, the financial institutions, etc., to uh, bondholders mm. as, and, and so forth and so on. Uh, is the one who is claiming that he's, he has uh, now put in place policy to stop uh, investors from receiving interest. Uh, we have not heard of any negotiation. So it's like a, a bullying tactics. And well, but, but the finance uh, ministry says that we have not finished the process. When we are done, we will give the update. So it looks like what the deputy minister said is not what's going to happen. That's what the statement wants to clarify, isn't it? I'm not sure about that. Mm. I'm not sure about that. And again, I think what the deputy minister said that is a debt exchange program is totally false. What are you exchanging 
the debt for. When you are exchanging something, you exchange A for B. Uh, in this case, what are we exchanging for? So it's purely debt restructuring and people are receiving the heavy haircut that uh, is meted out to them. Uh, that is simply the case. I don't know why the government is afraid talking about debt restructuring. Okay. So right. clearly we are into debt restructuring. Okay. Grateful to you, uh, Professor John Gachi, for joining us. He Thank is uh, Dean of the School of Business, University of Cape Coast. Now, to